My butternut squash vines had grown large and lush and showed much promise, but squash bugs saw the opportunity and pounced on it. I was using the masking tape method to try to control their numbers. Growing vegetables has its struggles. As you grow more of your food, you become more aware of difficulties of growing food. You become more understanding of the practices that happen and why people do it, especially with economic uh, motives that they have. So you understand why. That doesn't mean we shouldn't work towards new solutions. There are what's, There is what's called um, integrated pest management which uses natural, um, natural predators of certain insects to specifically target those insects that are a problem. And I think that's one of the best ways of dealing with, with things like that. Being able to solve our problems in the garden using nature's own systems to our advantage is the most sane solution, but sometimes it is not easy to strike the balance. I was seeing a bit of wilt in some of the squash vine leaves, and that is never a good sign. Although on a sunny day you may be tempted to think that the strong sun is causing the wilted leaves, which can happen after several days of cloudy rainy weather, most of the times drooping squash leaves signify a problem. I had female flowers with tiny squash fruit already developing, so I was hopeful but the drooped leaves were an omen of things to come. I wasn't sure if the plants had been infected by some kind of bacterial or fungal wilt. I had been vigilant to take away any squash bug eggs I saw on the leaves, so I was confident that that was not the problem. Squash bugs can multiply exponentially and will make a squash vine droop overnight as they pierce leaves and stems, sucking away sap and opening up wounds for pathogens to enter. When I returned a week later, the small squash was growing bigger and the plant was sending out vines, crossing the chicken wire barrier so I needed to rein them in so they would not become groundhog lunch and so I could keep its side panels removable. Seeing this kind of growth renewed my hope. Many pests become pests precisely because the system lacks a specific natural predator that would keep population numbers in balance. That may be because many of our cultivated species are exotic, having been artificially introduced by humans. Coincidentally, many agricultural pests are also exotic species that hitched a ride in boats, planes, or luggage and found themselves in the land of plenty without a natural predator. It is interesting to note that when you observe native plants in the wilderness, you don't quite see them suffering from pest attacks. It may be that our domesticated food species have been selected and bred to have less of the bitter and toxic compounds the plants use as a first line of defense. Native plants make themselves less appealing to pests by fighting directly against them. On the other hand, the supple and sweet cultivated varieties depend on human intervention to keep reproducing for generations. For that fact, they become magnets for pest population booms. I returned a couple of weeks later to check out my vines, but while it still was putting out strong leaves and flowers, something was going awry, slowly. Part of the vines had withered and the growing squash had stunted. I was optimistic about the squash. It seemed to really be up to a good start. But then, um, well, the one fruit that had set, it just, it's still here, but the, the vine withered. So I've lost maybe one or two even vines. There's still one that's very healthy and it's growing up and out. I don't know, I do see a small fruit there that has just set. That's the only hope I have so far. If, if it dies, if it decides to die for whatever reason this one died, then that'll be it. I won't have any butternut squash this year. I thought I had it safe. I would have a few at least, if not a lot. But you can never really understand what a squash will do. It can just produce an absolute absurd abundance, but it can also be terribly frustrating when it just decides to die for whatever disease reason. I even was able to stop the spread of the, 
the squash bugs. I don't see any squash bugs here. And for several days, I was taking out the eggs. So I managed to do that with just manual control. And yet something else killed the, the vine, one of the vines. So I'll hope that the vine that's still here, that it produces a few at least, so I can have, and at least say that I produced some squash in the first year. But this doesn't count. I mean, I could probably eat this and it'd still be okay. It's already setting up, but no, I wanted to get at least, well, at least two, three decent butternut squashes. Time will tell. But what actually happened to my butternut squash? Why did it fail and would I even be able to prevent its demise? You will find out right after this commercial. My butternut squash vine was showing mixed signals when it came to health. While it still had lush leaves growing and flowers setting fruit, one vine had withered completely and the leaves were progressively drooping. We can try to fight back by either spraying toxic chemicals or we can try to manually control pests with lots of patience and determination. I had to investigate what exactly was attacking the vine, slowly crippling it. That is when I decided to look at the stem and saw damage done by a larva eating the vine from the inside out. This was the squash vine borer. It is a pest that quietly eats away at the insides of the stem, hidden from view. I had not had much of a problem with these pests in the previous garden, but squash was never something I grew too much of since my previous limited growing space forced me to plant things I valued more. I tried removing the larva, but at this point I knew that the plant would not recover, which meant no meaningful fruit harvests for me. A moth lays eggs on the stems of the squash vines and the larva grow inside. If I had caught it soon, I could have tried to extract it or use a piece of wire to kill the larva without disturbing the stem. It's official, the squash vine is completely dead. And after I found those borers, I kind of half expected them, especially because we were in such a hot and humid environment where everything would be wanting to wilt as temperatures rose beyond 90, 94. There was no chance that that vine would be able to root itself again, especially because it wasn't on the ground. That's a downfall, I think, of trying to raise them up, is that if borers do get through to their stems and the parts of the plant which are higher up are not able to root themselves as they usually do when they're trailing along a the land like through the lawn or in a actual fertile place so if the plant is not able to trail around in the ground it's not going to be able to set up roots in its further points as it's it has the ability to because of that it's completely dead <laughs> All I have is a small, really small butternut squash as a consolation prize, which is disheartening. I am glad that the the beans have taken the spot, and that's partially the reason why I always plant more than one thing in a place, because I don't want the place to be completely empty and lose that space. However, I wish I had butternut squash, my feeling is that if the borers had not attacked it, it would be producing a lot of butternut squash up until the frost, which means two more months even. It would be very prolific. However, it wasn't this time. Now it's a bit too late. It has been too late to grow, try growing them again. So it's not going to be this year. Well, I have a really small one this year. In the coming years I would be more vigilant, looking for damage near the stem to act early. Having the vines trail around would also be something to think about. Once I had a butternut squash vine grow as a volunteer in my past garden, growing huge and producing more than 40 very large fruit, without any maintenance. But I should have known that that's not the common experience. There are a few old tricks to help prevent this pest like wrapping aluminum foil near the stem. I would have to test it out. If you have a tried and true method for controlling this borer, please share it in the comments. 
I will be eager to know what works for you.